Alex Pena with KSI Press here with Earl Small, who's coming off a first round submission win at CFFC 113. Earl, how are you? Man, living, brother. Like we said previously, uh, before we got on here, man, every day above the dirt is a good one. So just blessed to be here, blessed to be speaking to you, blessed to be alive, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. It's been five days since your fight. How are you feeling? Got a stomach ache, bro. I've been eating so much food. <laughs> I've been tearing food up. <laughs> Look, I had to take a bunch of the candy wrappers off the computer desk. Like, oh, shit. I'm about to go on video. Let me clean up a little bit. <laughs> That's fantastic. How's your body feeling? Really good. Um, I was a little bit, I was strangely sore because it wasn't like I was in a crazy war. But, um, man, it, it's 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 good thing that I trained hard. It, let's just say that. Weird <laughs> aches. Weird aches. Soreness. Muscle soreness. Weird. Awesome. Um, well, I'm, 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 I'm glad that you're not feeling too bad. Um, well, it, it was an awesome win. How did you feel about your performance? Uh, I'm like such a critic, man. I'm like so analytical, over analytical for the most part. And um, I worked so hard, trained so hard, and I got so many tools in the toolbox now other than just being a jiu-jitsu guy. And I didn't get the opportunity to showcase them unfortunately my last fight even though it was a, a loss um i really showed a lot of striking and stand-up prowess and this fight i really wanted to show even more but um homeboy wanted to clinch we grappled and it went my way so what what was the game plan going into the fight you know what we were just prepared to go into deep water um i know uh, I knew a lot about my opponent, so I knew that he had uh, a, a crazy amount of cardio, worked really hard. Um, a lot of his fights, he's going the distance to and looked pretty good. He fought some D1 wrestlers and other grapplers, and uh, I had to just prep myself to be able to go to war, stand up, strike, and it, I honestly didn't do a lot of grappling jiu-jitsu. It was a lot of wrestling and a lot of stand-up work, so... Um, we game plan a lot of different um, techniques on the feet and things that he does. I expected him to go backwards more and play longer. He came out like like he was shot out of a gun. His name was Shotgun. He came out like he was shot out of a gun. And uh, we end up clinching and grappling. Um, I want to go back to your loss against Miles, man. Uh, I always find it fascinating how professional athletes deal with their first loss. What – what were the emotions like that night? Whoa. So you'll dig into a whole lot of things here. And I'm not, I don't like to sound, I don't want it to be like, this guy's making a ton of excuses. Fuck him, blah, blah, blah. So I've always kept it kind of hush. We'll just say that I had a lot of things going on previously before the fight. If you do watch the actual footage, I only have one corner man. My, my main coach wasn't, he couldn't make the fight because of the COVID regulations or some shit. It caused a little bit of, um, anxiety not only just through me but my friends family my corner and uh it just caused a lot of bullshit but i went through that i ended up fucking fighting anyways you know a lot of people tell me don't fight unless you got your team there maybe your head coach there don't do that i did anyways um and i thought i performed really good and the cornerman that i did i did have is a very experienced cornerman he's you know what my head jiu-jitsu coach and in between rounds he was telling me like Yo, you're winning. It's like, you're winning this fight. Um, the second round, I didn't get taken down. I slipped. It was a slip. In my mind, I just laid in guard. Um, I didn't get passed. I didn't, the whole fight, I didn't get hit in the face. The entire fucking 15 minutes, his gloves never touched my face. Maybe little pity patters. I don't consider it a fucking strike. Um, so, first round, second round, my coach is telling me, you're good. And now this dude wants to hump me and lay on my guard. Like, okay, you got to finish the fight, buddy. You got to pass my guard. He didn't want to. I thought I was going to get the hand raise, and I didn't. So um, I think the fans that night really helped me because a lot of people thought I won. A lot of people thought I got the job done. I knew what happened beforehand. I was proud of myself for going out there and, and already doing an anxiety-driven thing, fighting. Um, and still going out there and performing like a professional. And uh, it's not like I got my ass whooped. If I got my ass beat, I'd be like, fuck, like, damn, that's all on pay-per-view. 
I, I think it was more embarrassing for Miles than me. It was actually kind of embarrassing for CFFC. You guys gave this – they gave him a title fight, and it didn't perform. You know, uh, it sucks. I got a lot of finishes. That guy lays on a lot of people. I got over it real quick, and I said, I'm never going to fucking sit there and let a dude sniff my belly button again. <laughs> <laughs> like no more belly button sniffing for me i've been doing a lot of wrestling it sucks fuck wrestling if you're a wrestler you're really cool because that shit sucks i've heard crotch sniffer but a belly button sniffer is the first for me come on hey yeah hey you watch the fight his nostrils are in my belly button dude it's weird strange um, you know i i'm such a charismatic person really um i was talking during the fight uh, with miles it's funny because i looked over at his corner man his corner's like posture up posture up strike you gotta strike and i looked over and i'm like you tell him the right thing but he don't want to do it like i'm looking at his corner and that's why if you watch the fight too i'm making faces it it was cool i guess to the average fan but you know i'm a professional i should have fucking over my guard pushed away and got up I thought I was just going to get a free win and um, some nose hairs on my belly button, but it <laughs> didn't happen. Um, with all that being said, do you regret taking the fight? With Miles? Yeah. Hell no. He was a top-ranked guy and, like, super beatable, super-duper beatable. And that happened, you really seen in his title fight. He had uh, lost to Donovan Beard, who's now the champ. And I think that Donovan Beard is a, a – isn't as good as a fighter as me, but he had um, a whole nother round of belly button sniffing. I guess he got a runny nose, snuffy nose. He ran out of air and tired out. So, like, if Donovan Beard submitted you, give me an extra round, I'm really going to submit you. And I landed way more damage than all three fight. You combine Miles, Donovan, and me, I, I had more damage than both those guys combined in both fights. So, uh, come on, I'm not, I'm not really, it, I ain't even gonna talk about it anymore because I don't want to look like I'm fucking crying over it. One more. Um, All right. <laughs> I guess, does the split decision loss sting a little bit more because he got the title shot? Yeah, bro, this guy's got like all decisions. Come on, man, like, and as soon as he lost the fight, um, you can ask Andre Petrowski, ask Rob Hadak, ask Arius, um, the promoters, and them, all those guys. I, like, text them immediately. As soon as Miles lost, I said, my turn, title fight, give me it. And they were like, well, you got to win your last fight. And I'm like, I did. I was like, I fucking did. Watch the fight. What the fuck are you talking about? It, it just sucks, you know. Um, it can come down to commissioning. It can come down to who's sitting at the, on the chair watching the fight. I can make all these excuses, but I just can't lay on my back anymore. In my mind, Alex, I thought, if I go to wrestle up, he might pick me up and put me back down. And that's going to be like, whoa, he's fucking killing Earl. Um, or I could just lay on my back and smack him in his ears and hopefully get picked up. And you know what? If you watch his fight before mine, if you also watch... Uh, the Donovan Beer fight, they got stood up a lot. I didn't get stood up one fucking time. Jesus. So, Alex, have you ever seen a fight where a man gets taken down one time in 15 minutes and loses? That's, uh, it's, a, it's rare. Yeah, I, I got taken down one time in 15 minutes. The second round, I slipped uh, with, like, three minutes left after beating him up, so... So whatever. I would love a rematch because it's. I think that's an easy win. No, like I don't want to see. I don't want to be super duper cocky. But you asked me if it's stinging or if I regret it. No. If anything, I thought me and Miles were one day going to fight for the title. I thought it was going to be like they're going to build us up, two Philly guys. We can sell tickets. We're two big prospects, and let us bang it out for the title. But we end up meeting earlier than expected. And his name came around a bunch. His name came around a bunch, and it was like, Earl, you got to fight him or nobody else. They didn't give me a lot of options. I wanted to fight in Florida. I wanted to fight in Mississippi. They didn't give me no options. They said, Miles or nobody else. So 
sign the contract and my duties. So with all that being said, are you happy to be back in the win column? Yeah, that feels fucking good. Hell yeah, that feels really good, man. Like, you're the man. I mean, I wasn't... I didn't, I wasn't like, I didn't stoop very low for my last loss. I really didn't. I think I gained a lot of respect from a lot of people um, in the local Philadelphia community. Uh, But yeah, it definitely feels better when you win, especially against uh, a tough fighter like Dave. That dude was humongous. I seen him at the weigh-ins. I was like, Jesus. Yo, how is this dude 85 right now? Yeah, no, he's he he he's a big boy, and I have no idea how he makes one eighty five. You know what? Post fight, when I got my hand raised, I'm like looking. It's like me, uh, Big Dan, the referee, and Gladfelter. I'm like, yo, this is like, what are the Chinese dolls? What's going on here? Or no, not Chinese. Excuse me, Russian dolls. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on here? This guy's a monster. Um, but before we talk about what's next for you and what you want next, for anybody that, that does not know your story, how did you get into mixed martial arts? Oh, uh, Alex, um, I'm a a Romney child gypsy. Um, my last interview with, I think his name's John Brennan, he fucked that all up. Not a Romney child gypsy. I'm a Romney child gypsy. It, it's, they're gypsies from uh, UK, England, descent. Um, and in our culture, they're men they're fighting men essentially and i grew up around a lot of men that were respected for fighting more than going to school and getting a college degree more than building cars and houses like if you're a fighting man you're a millionaire and i just respected these people and as a child my father had um just embedded this stuff in me i watched a lot of blood sports as a kid boxing at ufc All of these things. It was not much of a filter. So I had no other choice but to idolize these people who you would think for a little kid, you'd be like, yo, don't let him watch this. I idolized these people. Uh, One day my pop said, "Uh, you want to try jujitsu out? Sure. I was a great wrestler as a child and uh, played football. I quit both. I said, I love this. This is so much fun. Learning cool ways to choke people out. And back then it was a different time, brother. It was uh, not a lot of children. I was the only kid. I didn't even really have a kids program where I started at. I'm at the same school. I was with the adults, so it helped me. Man, it made me really good. Uh, it made, I was a smaller guy that ended up keeping small guy technique and growing into my body. And it just made me really good at jiu-jitsu. So I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed to just do this for a living. I didn't wake up one day and say, Yo, UFC fighters are sick. Yo, I can probably date a hot chick. Or, damn, you see Kobe Covington got this car? I want a car. No. I'm a born fighter. I'm around fighters. I don't give a fuck about money. I just respect being disciplined and respect what it takes to fight on a mouthpiece, fight a man, and shake their hand afterwards. Thank you for sharing that, man. I I, I appreciate that. Um, I also wanted to, like, just... I guess gas you up a little bit because I love your your merch with Trouble because uh my my old name was Trouble so it's just it's fantastic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got a funny story for that, brother. Um, people always ask me like, how did you get the nickname Trouble? Like, did you kill somebody? Did you fucking rip their eyeballs out? I'm like, no, this is funny. Actually, my father had two women pregnant at once, so I was the second one. My uncle was like, "Yo, that's Trouble right there," and it just stuck. So anybody out there that thinks I got this nickname because I'm a badass, nah, my pop was just promiscuous. And now I just grew up in the name Trouble. (laughs) Fantastic. 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 Still a good story. Still a good story, I think. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Well, then let's end with this, man. What do you want next? Are you, do you want that CFFC title shot? Like, do you want Donovan Beard? Um, What's up? Yeah, you know what? I man, I want this title a lot. All my team, the people I train with, have held it. Tim Williams, I think he held it and has the most defenses. Um, I did a lot of work with the Dawkins brothers. Kyle Dawkins held it for a while at one point. Um, a lot of my teammates held other weight classes at CFC, and I I do want it. Um, but it's gonna. What I need is what makes the most sense to grow my platform and make that way to the UFC. If it is with the CFC, then 
we will do that. I think I think I whooped Donovan Beard's ass. Um, I'm sure he'll think the same about me. Um, it's just management, contractual stuff. Uh, so many organizations have hit me up. Every single one on the East Coast said, fight for me. I'm going to give you a million dollars, and I'm going to give you a shiny belt. So we're just going to see. If I just need a couple wins, I don't care where I do. I might just get me a nice little vacation and get paid the most. I might go with whoever's going to throw me the most money. Um, we'll see. We're, we're going to see. I'm talking to my uh, management pretty frequently about different offers and what we're going to do next. Uh, I really do want the Donovan Beard matchup. I respect him. He's a tough dude. Uh, I just think he's can't fuck with me. He um, lost the two grapplers. I say he lost the two. He did beat Miles, but he was losing the fight. Um, and I'm a better grappler than Miles. And I'm I believe I'm like a bone nickel. I'm a freak jujitsu guy. So shit, I'd love to get a dub and link that back up with the contender series. Give me the big show, whatever. So we're going to see. Um, like you said, it's been five days. I'm eating candy right now. When I get off my sugar high, then uh, I'll sign one of these damn contracts. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Earl, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to plug your social media, plug any sponsors you might have, you want to thank anybody, plug your Twitch. The, the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah. Alex, first off, I want to thank you. I say this a lot. Uh, when I get when I do get interviews with people, you guys don't make a million dollars doing this shit. So I the same way I don't fight for money. I do this shit because I love it. I wanna inspire people. I wanna there's worse things in the world than fucking stepping in the octagon and fighting people. People deal with depressions, people deal with X, Y, and Z. And what you do, bro, I'm sure you're not killing the bank doing this. You do it because it's something you love. And you got to respect that. I don't care if you're making music, if you're fighting, whatever your thing is, if you respect the culture and you work hard, bro, I just want to thank you for giving me the time and the platform. Um, shout out to my squad, man. Team Balance, 302 Jiu-Jitsu, Ed Hall, Tim Williams, um, all of the sponsors that had worked on me. If you guys want to see me kick some ass or just the character that I am, uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram at trouble underscore 302 BJJ.